Hello, I'm Nathan and welcome to the fourth part of our Appian app build. In the last episode, we introduced the site and user interface side of our application for business users to interact with our Office Relocation Request app. Today, we're going to focus on automation and how we can use workflow within Appian to help our users reduce manual effort. Because we've used the record actions in previous episodes, a lot of the groundwork has been done for us. So let's get into it. From the designer homepage, we can open up the process model called create or update request. This process model was built automatically by Appian. So as we land in the process modeler here, we can see that it's already created a number of steps for us, such as the start node, which is that user interface form that the business users are interacting with, and a step called write records, which is saving that information into the record that we created back in episode two. Now, this may look pretty basic, but all of the components are there, but we can actually start to make this easier to understand for other people that might be coming and expanding this in the future. And you'll notice that currently all of those steps are sitting in a box called system. This is actually called a swim lane, and it's a really great way of separating out the different roles, responsibilities that fall into a process. And we're not just talking about people, these could be systems and they could be robotic processes as well. Now, since the goal today is to add an approval flow for requests being made and routing those requests to an office manager, what we're gonna do here is split out that particular swim lane of process that exists currently into a couple of others. So let's create two new swim lanes. We'll call one office manager and we'll call the other one requester. And we're gonna drag that start node since it's the requester that's starting the process down to the bottom. And we'll reconnect the process accordingly. And because the key part of this workflow today that we're building is for office managers to input some information, i.e. their decision, we've got a task that's very helpfully called user input task. So let's drop that onto our canvas, connect that up, and again, take out the lines that we don't need. And we'll call that manager review. And if we just double click into that step, you can then see we can configure that manager review user input task. Now there's a few things that we need to do here. And one of the key things that we need to do, because this is a user input task, we need to create an interface to allow the user to interact with it. So if we go into forms, We've got a couple of options. We can reuse an existing form that exists elsewhere within our application, or we can create a new interface. And that's what we're going to do today. But as part of creating a new interface, we're actually going to reuse some existing objects. So let's create that interface and call it manager review. And we'll call that an interface for managers to review relocation requests and approve. And then if we click edit interface, that will then take us into the interface designer that we've seen previously and land us in a blank interface to start building on. And as you can see, we can work on using templates, we can use examples, we can bring in components from the palette on the left-hand side. But what I wanna to do today is do a bit of a hybrid of reusing an existing object and adding some new things in. If I click into this expression button, this brings us into the expression editor. Now this is Appian's um, proprietary sale language, the low code behind the drag and drop components that you've seen me use previously. And using something called the rule bang prefix, we can actually look up other interface names and use those within our application or within our interface, sorry, for the application. So we're gonna use the request summary. That's that record request summary that we saw in a previous episode. And you'll notice down in the help, it's prompting me to pass through data or pass through an input into that request, something called a rule input. Now at the minute, we don't have any mechanism on this interface to pass data in. So we need to create a rule input, which we'll call record. And we'll say that it's request data. And we're gonna link that through to our request record and hit create. And then back in the box here, we use the identifier on the target interface. So in this case, it's called record. 
and then we use the ri bang prefix and use our record uh, sorry rule input called record here to pass and link that up and what that then does is shows us the interface that we're pulling in from that ORR request summary interface. Now at the minute there's no data in there because we haven't specified which record we're pointing to but we've now got the shell of the layout being reused from that other object. Let's go back into the design mode and we can go back into that drag and drop design approach. So we're going to use something called card choices next to capture the decision from the office manager and it puts in some default options here which obviously aren't relevant to us but again it's super simple to change to using something existing and what I mean by that is if you remember back to when we were creating the records we also set up a related record called status so we can use that as a record type source and look up that request status record and a bit further down, we then just need to say what the primary value is going to be, what text do we want to display. So if we specify value, you'll then see those four statuses are then available to us. Now at this stage, we're only displaying that. We need to actually capture that and save it into the record um, that needs to be written later on. So a bit further down, under display value, we're obviously going to use the status ID and save it into the same field as well and just to tidy up we don't need that heading label so we can just turn that off and say select your decision this request like so and finally we need a way of submitting it so we need to pop in a button for the manager to be able to click to complete this task so when this process model is initiated that request comes through, gets saved into the database. The manager will then get a task notification and they need a way of reviewing the data, which we've created, a way of submitting their decision, which is those four buttons at the top, and then a way of actually completing that request, i.e. submitting it and allowing the workflow to continue. So we'll call that submit, set the submit preference. So that then is flagging the task to say that we can continue it. And then finally, we'll put that as a primary button so it looks nice and bold. Now, obviously, user interface wise, we could improve this and make it look a little bit nicer, but let's just get this functionally working for today. So if we hit save changes, that's it. That's all we need to do on our interface. So if we go back into our process model and refresh, we can now see that that rule input that we've just created is now there as a mechanism to transfer data between the process model and that interface. But the key thing here is we need to be able to capture information back. So we need to specify how we're going to store that information. So let's very quickly go and create a new rule uh, node input called record. We'll put in the same type. So that record type that we've used previously. And then over on data, we need to map through the rest of the workflows data into this step, into this user input task. So again, we can just call on our process variable, in this case it's called record, and on the outputs we need to save that decision that the manager is giving us. So we need to be able to update that record process variable. So if we just create a new custom output, we have to use something called activity classes here. And this is basically the data that's held within that user interface. So that step that we just created, that new record variable, that's our activity class parameter. So we pop that in there and say that we're gonna save that into our record process variable. And the last thing that we need to do here is because this is a task that's being created, we need to specify who is gonna get that task. So under the assignment task tab, we've got a couple of options. We can assign it to a group, assign it to a person, even assign it to parameters such as the process initiator, the process owner, for example. For testing purposes today, let's just put it to myself so that I get the notification directly. But obviously we'd probably put that into a group of people so that if one's off, somebody else could pick it up. So now let's save and publish that. And the final thing here, before we go and test this, we need to make sure that we've got a way of saving that decision. So we can pop in what's called a write records step and we'll have that within the system area and we'll call that save decision 
double click that and in the setup it's a nice and simple setup screen here to specify what are we saving well we're saving the record because that's the output we're capturing from the user input task and we've also got the ability to set up an audit trail here effectively and capture the events that are being um, actioned so in this case it's going to be a update and we're going to capture who the person is that's doing it and the timestamp for when that's happening as well. So if we save and publish this now, what we can now do is actually test that this works and we can use the process model debugger to do that. So if we start the debugging process, it will bring up the form, which is the form that the business users are using to create their request. So let's pop a quick request in here and we'll put it to office one, two, three. So, um, do a quick search for somebody. I'll just use myself. Oops. And we'll set the priority as high and the move date for next week. So, let's hit create. The process modeler will then bring us into a monitoring tab view of our process model. So, you can see we've just started the process. If we hit refresh, it will save that initial request and it's now at that manager review step. Now at this point, an email will be generated notifying that manager, in this case myself, that there's a new task assigned to them that they need to pick up and work on. So if we come into my email, we'll see that I've just had a new email come through with a new task that's been generated and assigned to me. So let's click view task and have a look at that task that's created. So a few things here. First of all, you'll notice at the top it's telling me that I need to accept this task. This is really important if you've assigned a task into a group because you don't want multiple people working on the same task. So this effectively takes it out of the queue and assigns it to yourself so that nobody else can work on it unless you reassign it to them or pop it back into the queue. So let's accept that. And then let's just have a look at what's going on here. So first of all, underneath our buttons at the top, we've got all of that data that we've just entered. So data from another part of the workflow has flowed into this interface. And then we've got our interface that additions at the top here, all of those decision buttons. So we're gonna say approved for this particular request. You'll then see that the status updates to approved. If we hit submit, that will then complete that task. But if we come back into the process model and just refresh, what we should see is that that process has now completed successfully. And there we go, that's gone through, which means that that decision has been written and updated that overall request that we've created at the beginning. So there we have it, a simple addition to our workflow, but you can now see that we've started to mirror a real life process whereby somebody has submitted a request and it's gone to somebody else for review. In terms of extending this, we could actually start to put in some additional steps here. You'll notice that there's already a decision gateway on this process model whereby if somebody clicks the cancel button, it stops the process. But we could put in a step here whereby we set up a rule that maybe says we automate particular requests if it's a move within the same office or if it's a move happening in so many days time because it's an urgent request. So you can put in a variety of different rules or decision gateways that allow different process routes to happen depending on what the rule is that's being followed. So that covers our lesson for today. Stay tuned for our next episode where we'll have a look at extending through integrations and adding some additional content into some of our interfaces through Google Maps so that we can actually pinpoint the exact location of the offices that we're moving to. Don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. We'll see you there.